Something that's been on my mind quite a bit lately is this whole notion of what is a cinema camera. I think when the Sony FX3 came out, a lot of us were looking at it like, it's not really a cinema camera, is it? It's just an A7S III in a cinema body. Okay. But what is a cinema body then? Like, is it just the fact that it has rigging options? Is it just the fact that it's kind of square and rectangular or a cube, whatever that is? Or is it just a camera that's a little bit more tailored to videography rather than photography. And another thing that was bothering me when that camera came out is this whole idea that a cinema camera is better in a sense that it makes you a better creator, which I really don't think is the case. This whole rivalry or war between like cinema cameras and mirrorless cameras or photography hybrid cameras, whatever, I think it's bullshit. I also think cameras like this Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera further confuse the issue because this is kind of like a hybrid mirrorless camera that isn't really a hybrid because it's not very much of a stills camera. So it further complicated this market of cinema cameras and hybrid mirrorless cameras to the point where what even is a cinema camera anymore? So hands down my favorite camera right now is the Lumix S5, which you can see in my hand right here. So. For all intents and purposes, and specifically for the conversation that we're having right now, this is not a cinema camera. Now, if you just looked at the S5 on paper, you might be surprised that it isn't a cinema camera. Now, this is the same sensor that is in the Lumix S1, the Lumix S1H. These are Netflix approved cameras for whatever that means. If you care about that, that's fine. If you don't, totally cool as well. Do not argue about it in the comments. But these are cameras that are sort of labeled as cinema cameras that just happen to take stills as well, whereas with the S5, I think because it's so cheap, most people just see it as another hybrid mirrorless camera. But like I said, it has that same sensor as the S1 and S1H, a full V-Log profile, which is saying it'll give you 14 stops of dynamic range. And on paper, the Pocket 4K, for example, is only giving you about 12. And I think even in real world situations, I would say that the S5 has on par or if not better dynamic range than the Pocket 4K. I don't have a 6K with me right now for the purpose of this test, but I would say it's relatively similar. And so even though it's in a photo body, I do think the S5 could easily be your next cinema camera. And if that sentence sounds familiar, that's because my buddy Spencer already did a video demonstrating how the S5 could easily replace your cinema camera. That's literally the title of his video. So go watch that video if you want to deep dive into the S5 as a cinema camera itself. The only thing that's really been holding back the S5 for me is the glass. And like I said, I think this is all about lenses because all of the cameras that are out now could technically be a cinema camera. They all have the video specs and the features and the dynamic range and the look that you'd want from a camera in a modern day. But really, like with any camera, it's gonna come down to the glass. Now, unlike with cameras where you can find relatively affordable options for the body to give you all the things that you need when it comes to lenses and especially cinema lenses, it's a whole can of worms. Historically, they have been incredibly expensive. We're talking upwards of $25,000, $30,000, $10,000, whatever. They're expensive pieces of glass. There's also been a weird market of extremely budget and affordable cinema lenses, kind of capitalizing on the idea of having a cinema lens for people that probably don't even need a cinema lens, which is something we'll talk about a little bit later. We're talking about like Rockinons, those types of lenses where they're maybe three, 400 bucks. They're gonna give you the cinema gears and all the stuff that makes it look like a cinema lens, but their image quality has never really lived up to the definition of a cinema lens. And they're definitely not something that I would recommend for professional use. Now, all of that has changed very recently. There is quite a few different companies and manufacturers making cinema lenses now that are quite affordable, but they're actually really good. And usually cheap and good don't go in the same sentence, but I think today we can actually say there is a product that is cheap and good, and it's a cinema lens. And that lens is this. This is the Mikey T2.1 85 millimeter cinema lens. It's part of a complete line of cine lenses that Mikey is now making. I actually have a Mikey lens for the Pocket 4K that I bought a couple years ago that I really loved. And it was sort of an appetizer for what they are capable of as a company. Mikey actually reached out to me for this video, so that's my disclaimer. This lens was given to me for free, but my opinion of it is completely unbiased. If I don't like it, I can send this thing right back and I can tell you not to buy it. But you know, this lens is actually really nice. Oh, it is so hot in Canada. It's hot all over the world. Who the hell knows what's going on? Global warming. They're not telling us something. We got UFOs. We got fucking 
they're making a fucking shitty movies. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a little sip of some Brewski McTuski here. Uh, this is a Mithras, which sounds like Mothra, which reminds me of that shitty Brian Cranston Godzilla movie. I deserve subscribers. It's not even beer, it's cider. So we're, we're kind of, we're, we're, we're a little overcomplicated right now. Look, the S5 is my favorite camera. I think it's good as a cinema camera. I think photo lenses can be great for videography, but when you're trying to do really hardcore professional work and you're on set, and maybe when you're on set, you're gonna have a first AC, which is someone's gonna pull focus for you. So then you need a follow focus on there. And on top of that, there's this whole conversation around client optics. If you show up with a little camera that looks like their cousin or nephew could have bought on bestbuy.com and just shown up with their mirrorless camera to shoot their commercial, they're gonna be like, why did we hire this guy on Craigslist? Because I had an ad on Craigslist. If you're gonna hire me on Craigslist, that's why I'm here. So I'm the Craigslist videography guy now. And then you have to have this whole conversation around, yes, my camera's good enough, and you're stupid if you think I need a red, all that shit. Now, a cinema lens, just beyond having better optical quality, just has more bells and whistles for things that you would need on set. And that is where I think a cinema camera becomes a cinema camera. It's not about sensor and all that other stuff. All the cameras that are out now are good. You just need the accoutrement. You need the accessories and the things that make that camera really tick and work for professional use. But that doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money anymore. Like we said, cheap and good can actually go in the same sentence now. And this Mikey lens is just such a damn good lens for the money. But I don't remember how much it costs. So let me look that up real quick. Now this lens isn't exceptionally cheap by any means, but for an 85 millimeter T 2.1, which kind of equates to roughly an F 1.8 ish lens at $1,200, I think it's actually a steal of a deal. And especially because this is a full frame cine lens. This is a lens that I'm putting on the S five for specifically L mount. You can get it for EF. You can get it for E mount. You can even get micro four thirds versions stuff like that. APS-C, whatever. But for me, I wanted a full frame cine lens and that's a market that is just way, way out of my price bracket, but I want that cine lens. I want a lens that I can gear up with a follow focus. I want a lens that isn't a photography lens. And I want a lens that looks like a cine lens because a lot of photo lenses have a pretty sharp fall off when it comes to bokeh. Whereas with this 85 millimeter, it's a really nice gradual fall off. And as you can see in some samples here, this just is, a, it's a beautiful lens. 85 millimeter is really a portrait focal length and it's not something you would use often for run and gun. But when Mikey reached out to me, this is just one that I was interested in because I was trying to get that crazy bocalicious look from this full frame camera. And I think that this lens is just doing an exceptional job. It also has very minimal focus breathing, which is another issue with photo lenses where when you're focusing from one point to the next point, you will see the actual image shift a bit. And for a T 2.1 at 85 millimeters, the focus breathing on this is extremely well controlled and like i said for 1200 bucks and i think it's also just a fantastic looking lens it's a beautiful lens on this camera rig it up you know with your cage and your monitor and all that kind of stuff and who's going to tell you that you don't have a cinema camera like i'm just so tired of that conversation and i just think having a cine lens beyond the practical benefits of how it makes your life easier on set like having gears like having a de-clicked aperture so that it's not clicking if you have to move in between dark and bright scenes all that kind of stuff just makes having a cine lens a smart option. And like we said, on top of everything else, if you're working with clients and you're on set with them, it looks good. It looks cool. It looks like you know what you're doing. It makes you look professional. Now, if 1200 bucks for a lens is out of your price point, totally understand. It doesn't mean you have to go and buy a cheap rocket on. Don't do that. What I would recommend, and we've talked about FD lenses and vintage lenses on this channel before, is I would grab some Canon FD lenses, adapt them to your camera, and then just put cine rings on the lens itself. Now, these are always gonna give you that cool vintage kind of look, and the K35s, which are actual Canon cine lenses, they shot Aliens, they shot a bunch of different movies. Those lenses are basically just FD lenses rehoused for cinema. So you can essentially do the same thing yourself like I've done here. I've put links in the description of this video so you can find links for the gears, you can find links for the caps, all that kind of stuff. I've gone a little extra and put my name on the cap itself and you know, sometimes you just gotta be a little extra. Now at this point, I think it's only fair to show you some footage from the Mikey 85 millimeter T 2.1 with the Lumix S5 just running around with it, nothing fancy, nothing snooty, just a nice footage reel to show you what this thing is capable of. Now, because the S5 has internal image body stabilization, 
you normally wouldn't want to really hand bomb with an 85 millimeter lens if you weren't completely regged up with like an easy rig or a steady cam or a gimbal because it has ibis it's totally getting rid of those micro jitters which i think is really nice and so you can walk around with an 85 millimeter lens so here's some footage with the mikey 85 millimeter So as you can see, this is a very, very nice lens. I think it captures images beautifully. I think 85 millimeter is a really interesting handheld run around lens because it is such a tight focal length, even on full frame. Of course you can get their 35 millimeter and the various other lenses that Mikey is offering now, but regardless of what camera you own, I do think it's smart to start building out a small cine kit, especially if you're someone who's doing client work and you're doing bigger productions. It just looks better when you show up on set. And beyond that whole optics thing, which I hope eventually dies someday, they're just better lenses and they work better for you on set. And let's stop arguing about cinema cameras because all cameras are good now. And as long as you can tell the story that you wanna tell, I don't care if you shoot that thing in 8-bit, 10-bit, log, no log, standard, don't give a shit. Shoot it on a fucking iPhone. Everything is great right now. Tell the stories that you want to tell. Don't worry about all the other bullshit. Now, if you have any questions about the Mikey lens or the S5 or anything that we've talked about in this video, let me know in the comments and you will hear or see me next time I feel like making a video. Stay cool because it is absolutely roasting out there and it, you know, dehydration and heat stroke can catch up on you real quick. You won't even know it's coming. And I've also learned that even later on, if you come home and you've just been hot all day, like you can get sick a couple days later. So stay cool, get in that AC if you can. Be happy, be healthy. See you very soon. Cheers. Oh.